Hello, everyone, and welcome to the brand new Linux for Everyone show. This is episode 54. No. Oh, crap. <laughs> is it? Yeah, Wait, no, yeah, 54. It, no, oh, right. I was just I saying 50. I thought I messed it up, and I didn't mess it up. <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness. I'm going to do it again, but if we want to keep that, that's yeah, fine. It's a good um, blooper. Okay. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the brand new Linux for Everyone show. With that being said, this is episode 54. I'll explain that in a second. But uh, what I want to do first is introduce you to my brand new co-hosts, Jerry and Schickel. Hey, everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. So awesome to have you guys here. <laughs> well, um, glad, to, glad to be here. By way of quick introduction, and I'll let them, I'll let them speak a bit uh, and introduce themselves, but by way of quick introduction, Jerry is <laughs> the man behind the song Brain Dead. Yes. And the song Brain Dead is what most of you have heard at the end <laughs> of every single Linux for Everyone podcast episode, and you've also heard it here and there on the YouTube channel. So uh, mm -hmm. he is the man behind that wonderful music. No no so yeah. Oh, yeah. And Schickel is, of course, the man behind everything Schickle. else. <laughs> um, he's the man behind Schickle. He, he sometimes goes, what's your, uh, can you show us your drink? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Show us hey, your drink. Who are you today? I'm Colton. Apparently. Colton. I don't know how that <laughs> happened, Colton. but nice to have you with us, Colton. Glad uh, you guys here. have of seen Schickle on various videos here on the channel and on Linux plus coffee. And I'm just so excited because, um, this is the dynamic that I've always wanted to have. I, every time that I guest host on another person's podcast, I enjoy it so much because it's just that, that free-flowing conversation. It doesn't have to be scripted. I don't have to just listen to myself talk the whole time. And that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Jerry. Um, just tell us, I don't know, uh, <laughs> some of your favorite things about technology or your favorite things about cool. Linux and why you're yeah. here and the meaning of life. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, you know, nothing uh, Nothing too major. Uh, no, uh, happy to be here. Um Man, like technology is, boy, I don't even know where to begin, Jason. I mean, I, I, I've worked in IT for over 15 some years. And so, I mean, I'm con pretty consumed by technology on a daily basis. Um, uh, and kind of where Linux falls into that for me is um, like Linux to me has always been this really kind of ubiquitous thing that I love um, and you don't even know it. So I, I used to teach high school technology. And so I would always talk about Linux and I tell my, I would tell my students, I ask, you know, raise your hand if you've heard of Linux. And you know, most of them, they were like, no, nobody would raise their hand. But then, you know, I would tell them like, you've interacted with something every day of, you know, every day you interact with things that like, Linux pretty much runs. I'm like, you know, it runs, um, yeah, it runs servers. It runs on our desk, you know, desktops. It runs in embedded devices. Like to me, like Linux is so ubiquitous and that's like such an awesome thing to me. And that's why I like, that's why I love it so much is like all the practical uses that, you, <laughs> that it has. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, like Uber uses it. Netflix right. uses it. It's just mm -hmm. it, like sure. you said, I think ubiquitous is a great word yep. for that. Yeah. It's really impacting so much mm -hmm. of our lives, and we just don't even know it most yeah. of the time. And so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what brought me, that's kind of what brought me into this, the Linux world, into this community. And I'm just, I, I love, um, I love the openness and the, and the willingness for, uh, to share and, um, talk about really cool things that, uh, that, uh, people are working on. Like to me, that's what I love about the Linux community is like, there's always people working on really, really cool stuff to make, <laughs> Um, you know, from things, um, like tiny robots to automate their coffee maker or all the way up to like, you know, big websites, um, big web apps. Like I just love everything in between and like everybody's, everybody's always willing to just like talk about just the really cool stuff they're working on. And so, um, man, I'm super happy to be here. So I'm happy too, dude. <laughs> really, really happy to have you here. Yep. Um, I just wanted to touch on something that you said, yeah. uh, about, about the projects that the, the mm -hmm. collective community is is working on, it's. I feel like if we did a show uh, three times per day, 
for the next five years. We would not cover even a fraction mm-hmm. of all the cool stuff that people are making every single day. I mean, mm-hmm. and and in my three years doing this, covering Linux on various platforms, every single time that I I talk about a certain app or a certain thing that I stumbled across that's neat, um, people who've been using Linux for 10, 15, 20 years are mm-hmm. like, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> And it's just it just goes to show that it's such a wide reaching community of creators and 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 like you can't ever assume that everyone has mm-hmm. heard of everything that's being worked on. And I just I love that mm-hmm. because that I love it because the sense of discovery never ends. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. Shickle, same questions. I do be that boy. Now he didn't. He didn't touch the meaning of life. I'll let that. I didn't. I'm gonna let that one. I didn't want to touch that one. This time I'll let it slide. But we're gonna get into it at some point. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, for me, I've been using it for gosh, just just over five years now, or at least five years that I knew of. I suppose before, as as Jerry mentioned, it's everywhere. You don't even Mm -hmm. know you're using it half the time. But um, it's on our gas pumps. I posted a picture in the channel the other day of my gas pump. Sorry to interrupt you, Shickle, but yeah, he it's just everywhere. crashed a whole a whole wow. gas station on his own. <laughs> this guy. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Carry on, Shickle. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was in high school um, when I decided that I would just go ahead and, and make the jump for it. Or actually, mm-hmm. you know what? I was last year of middle school that I was doing this, and um, I just. It became something to me where at first it was something that I could do alternatively, right? It was something new. It was something fun. And the more I used it, it became more about being able to create or build or find solutions to any kind of problem that you have or or thing you want to do. And someone somewhere has a way to do it. And blows my mind because for me on a core level linux is like the culmination of all of the technology that will make the future work right like we implement these incredible uh programs that power some of the most advanced systems in the world and and we develop these even if we don't always let's say implement them in our desktop systems you know um We've got snapshotting file systems with like inline compression and we've got crazy powerful encryption stuff going on. And then on on the surface of all of that, right, all that can be happening on this lower level. And then we have these beautiful desktops with different priorities and different ways of working that I think it's just sort of there's no there's no limit to the amount of solutions that Linux can provide. <laughs> Finding huh. it just might be a little difficult because there's so you much. You know what? I feel like that is already the theme of this conversation <laughs> is just that limitless potential mm-hmm. of choice projects and solutions. And like, ah, it's just, yeah, it excites me. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that, that was a fantastic answer. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that up. In addition to Tuxedo Computers and our friends in the community, Linux for Everyone is also made possible by Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have multiple distros available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and Arch, by the way. They've got multiple server plans to make any app or service flexible and easily scalable. You can use a Linode server to easily set up a WordPress-powered website, your own personal VPN, a dedicated Jitsi or Minecraft server, and much more that you can get installed with a single click. Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size, so you can get help from a real person when you need it. Right now, Linux for Everyone fans who are opening a brand new account can get a $100 60-day credit by going to linode.com slash Linux for Everyone. Linode's been doing cloud computing since 2003, before Amazon even entered the picture. So they're not trying to take over the retail world like other companies. They're just focused on good old fashioned Linux loving cloud computing. Go to linode.com slash Linux for everyone to get started building your new project. It's where we host all of ours and we're proud to call them a longtime partner. As far as this show, uh, what can you expect? If you're, 
if you're used to listening to the Linux for Everyone podcast, uh, you can expect roughly the same kind of format. I mean, we're going to have uh, discoveries of the week, except we're going to probably call that software spotlights or app spotlights now mm-hmm. because this uh, won't be a weekly show. Um, we're still going to have, you know, kind of a meaty topic that we discuss. Uh, maybe that's some kind of topical thing that's happening in the community, or it's more of a philosophical Linuxy discussion. Um, we will have a couple new segments like tech for everyone mm-hmm. and games for everyone. And uh, beyond that, I mean, we'll talk about some of your feedback. Uh, we'll throw you a question at the end of the show and feature some of the best answers in the next show. And um, beyond that, we're just kind of going to play it by ear. It's sort of like the rebirth of of the Linux for Everyone show. So, yeah. I'd love to hear what each of you guys are working on as a hobby, a passion cool. project. Mm-hmm. Not work-related, not show-related, not... You know, not anything, anything that you are voluntarily working on to make your, your tech life or your home life better, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, who wants to go first? Definitely not me. Definitely not you. <laughs> well, then. Scary. Yeah, I'll hop in. Uh, we, we can rock, paper, scissors it if you want. No, I'm good. To talk about too. Yeah, you I'm good. good? Okay. Yeah, I'll hop in. So, right. um, so yeah, I work IT for my day job. So I'm kind of up, you know, neck deep in, in servers and stuff all day long. And so, um, I'm always hesitant to like bring, bring that kind of, um, work home with me. A lot of times I like when I clock out, I want to, I want to play video games or I want to do something. I want to do music or I want to do something that's like a different part of my brain. However, um, I do have a few projects that I've been kicking around, um, that definitely involve, um, involve Linux in a lot of ways. Um, the first, they, they kind of, t- the two of them kind of go together. I'm, 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 I'm building a home server to give myself, um, just, I, I want to be able to have a place to store some, some videos and, um, do some different things like with a, a PF sense firewall and do some routing. Um, just kind of taking control of my network security a little bit more. Um, so that's kind of one thing, but also part of that is I want to have, I'm, I'm working on kind of a personal website, um, and so I'm wanting to have a place to where I can kind of stage, um, this website and, and as I'm working on it and, um, before I push it live, I, you know, I'm probably going to, um, yeah. okay. you know, host it somewhere, but having just a staging server to work on this website and the website is called hanger and And I'm trying to think of how to explain this without sounding like a complete, like, <laughs> You guys are going to look at me like I'm like insane, but I'm, I'm going to the domain, right? It's, it's not live though yet. Is it? It is actually live right now. There's a landing page that a I put modern up. marketplace <laughs> featuring locally sourced delights. It, okay. What? So have to explain this. Okay? I am going to have to explain it. Yes. So me and me and one of my cl- uh, closest friends, we have this running gag that, um, <laughs> this is going to sound so ridiculous. I'm probably the only one, we're probably the only ones that thinks this is funny whatsoever, but uh, it's fine. You never um, know. It's this running gag. We have a we have a shared note that we we coming up with like these uh, stores and shops that like you would see at like a pop up hipster market, and they're always like they're always like one word, right? And they sell something very hyper specific. So like. Um, we started coming up with like these one word names and then we would come up with what they sell. Like it's like a game, like it's just running bit. It's like a game that we come up with and it makes us laugh a lot. Um, and so like things like, um, delve, that's a word that just sounds delve. like, right. Like it's like some shop and then it's okay. like, what do they, uh, what do they sell? Equipment. That's no, oh, equipment. Oh no, 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 no. It's never anything that's related to the name. They sell, oh, <laughs> My they s- they sell homemade beef jerky and hand painted Altoid tins, right? Like, it's like the most random. I know this sounds ridiculous. So, no, what? But I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing. So I had the idea. I'm like, I'm definitely like. So my uh, my friend, she made this logo for it that has nothing to do with anything, but it just cracked us up because it was like the, like a logo that you would see. And I'm like, well, I'm definitely going to have to buy the domain. So I bought the domain and then that just sent us down this path. It's like, okay, well, like I've always wanted to build a website from scratch. 
like do the whole bit HTML, CSS, learn some JavaScript, mm-hmm. and like really you're not st- talking about you're not talking about like uh, WordPress or no, 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 Ghost no, no, no. or anything with mm-hmm. a, any no. template. You're just from scratch, literally just uh, all yes. Code. Now I mean, there would probably be wow. some there would probably be some templates and some like. It it does and Daunt they sell um, they sell um, uh, handkerchiefs made of uh, you know uh, wool in patterns. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, so like oh, I, I've I've wanted to like beef up my. I used to teach kids how to build websites using HTML and CSS. So I know I know I know a, a bit, but I want to like this is a good project for me to start like really beefing up those skills. And so it's like we're doing the whole bit. We're gonna plan out like what the website looks like. We're going to start, I'm going to start building it. She's going to, she's a photographer. She's going to start, like, we're going to start prototyping things that they actually sell. Like we're going to take pictures of them. And oh do my product, God. Product. You know what's going to happen, Jerry, in like two <laughs> years, you guys are going to actually be selling these things. It's going to be like, um, it's well, mm, geek something. What was, uh, <laughs> Oh, think geek. who is the, it was like Fink Geek with their yeah. April Fool's yeah. <laughs> uh, products that it eventually turned into actual products, right? It could be, yeah. It was like a Razor with the toaster. I mean, <laughs> who knows? You get right. enough demand, why not? They why do the Kickstarter and, and build the thing and sell it. Yeah. So, I mean, right now it's just a hilarious art installation that maybe we only think is funny. But we've got like 50 stores and so we're going to come up with logos what? and color schemes. and That's insane. Yeah. So <laughs> I can't I can't wait to see that. Uh, we'll definitely share it. That sounds yeah, it's amazing. Really, it's really fun. Least. It's really fun. So that's kind of like it's a big project, but that's kind of where I'm working. And then also uh, kind of my newest thing that I'm working on. I got to give a shout out to Justin from the community. Uh, Optiplex Prime. He sent Optiplex me Optiplex Prime. Yes, he sent me a uh, ThinkPad X220. Um, what a guy. Um, so I'm, you know, putting Linux on this thing and messing around nice. with it and playing around. Can, I, can you show us like a side shot, a profile shot? It's chonky. Oh yeah, it's chonky. I love it. Yeah. The thing's indestructible though. It you really can knock is. someone out with that. I, oh yeah. I, it's I will, like a brick. Yeah, we'll definitely wing it at someone if they try to come in on me. So <laughs> So anyway. Well, yes. Thank you Justin. That was a You're good. That man. was a unexpectedly incredible answer with the whole hanger and blade. <laughs> yeah. com. Yep. I don't, I mean, I can't, I, again, I can't top that. I don't even know why I'm on this show. Really. (laughs) Um, All right. So I'll go next. Um, I'm going to break the rules because the, I guess the project that I'm working on is kind of work related, but Mm -hmm. it's also something that I'm doing to just further my own knowledge. Um, Because I've, I've, for a long time, I've been wanting to step a little bit outside the desktop Linux box and, and start to do just learn a little bit about server management, you know? Mm-hmm. And so what I'm doing is uh, I'm using Linode, who uh, sponsors a lot of the videos on this channel. And I am setting up a mail server, and I'm setting up a discourse forum, mm-hmm. and I'm going to build a couple different websites, all using, um, you know, their cloud instances with probably probably Ubuntu 2004 LTS. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the challenge for me is that I've never used the command line this much, right? Because I'm just SSHing into my new server and 75% of the time completely ruining everything and then nuking it and starting over and doing better, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so my first, I, I think it took me three tries to get mail in a box functioning properly and it, it wasn't it wasn't the configuration it was all the dns mm, nightmare. it's always dns D- dns stuff is just a nightmare for me to wrap my head around um but i am happy to say that i got i successfully got jason at linuxtheworld.com working and i could send and receive and so that was like uh just a wonderful moment you know, that I, I felt like I kind of created this thing out of nothing. And yeah. that's, you know, um, that's what I want to be doing. Kind of like you, Jerry. I, wanted, I want to I want to go, well, you know what? I'm not, maybe I'm not satisfied with my mail solution. Mm-hmm. Maybe I want just a more professional uh, email address. Maybe I just want more control over, mm-hmm. over my email activity. Um, so eventually these will be, you know, handed to you guys and handed to maybe some members of the community or whatever. But uh, the other component of that is discourse, and that is completely <laughs> ruining me. Like, I can't do it. I cannot oh. do it. 
Um, their like famous 30 minute installation is so well documented, but I'm, I'm one of those guys, Shickle, like you, where I will get these errors thrown at me that nobody else has seen. <laughs> How the heck did you are, you, are you running this environment? Yes. Do you have these dependencies installed? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> Everything's still not working. <laughs> I had glorious egg roll, you know, glorious egg roll, proton GE guy. Yeah. I had him helping me. He's a red hat engineer. Like he couldn't help me. So <laughs> it, that's all I got going on. There's, there's tons of stuff I want to be doing, but, uh, not yet. I've got the, I've got the, um, <laughs> I can't point at it. The, uh, the Thaleo back there has <laughs> a bunch of new SSDs in it. Just waiting for me to uh, find some at-home server solution to start playing mm-hmm. with, uh, but yeah, I that, can help I'm you having, with that. I'm having fun. <laughs> I know you can, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get your help. and We're gonna talk about it. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun just kind of spinning up stuff on Linode and building mm-hmm. things and learning how to manage servers and you know make stuff work. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. How about you, dude? Oh, I've been I've been on a weird roll lately because. <laughs> As everybody probably knows, I embrace Google a lot, maybe too much. It's kind of like a weird embrace, you know, like it lasts a few seconds too long and you're not really sure what it means. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm going through a weird, a weird split with Google right now. I'm, I'm trying doing to like, just give less of myself. Are you doing like the walk of shame home or something? Is that what's happening? It's a little bit, you know, like I've got my heels in my hand and um, it's just sort of, I'm just kind of stumbling about, you know, it's uh, it's a, yeah, it's, it's been good, but it's been a little challenging. Um, one, one thing that I've discovered is that a lot of sites don't like it when you use a VPN for all of your traffic. So like Disney plus just doesn't work. I like, I just, it just does not like me. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm just not going to use Disney Plus. And um, oh, that's a sacrifice I don't expect people to make because, like, there's a lot of good content on that. I don't expect people to dump that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also feel like I've so willingly given so much data, like, every time I make a single move online, that, like, I'm, I want to find ways to reduce it and maybe, maybe be able to like find easier ways to do it, so that way I can help other people. Oh, that's, that's the, the goal trick, for me, isn't it? Easier, exactly. Is the the big million dollar hat trick? Yeah. That uh, this seems impossible. I mean, I think we're going to talk about this later on. But um, is there anything specifically that you're doing right now? Just like one thing to uh, to kind of pursue that goal a little bit. Yeah. Um, right now, my focus has been on my email, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I rather like Proton Mail for my email solution, but like I have Gmail for just about everything. Like even my Outlook Mail forwards directly to my Gmail. So yeah, it's it's not great because I get emails from, let's say, my doctor that go to my Gmail. I get emails mm-hmm. from lawyers that go to my Gmail. And while nothing I do is particularly something where I'm, I'm worried about the government coming after me or anything like that, but it's just all, it, it's just things that maybe they don't necessarily need to be open to learning algorithms and other things because they're not particularly relevant to like who I am. They're just things that happen to be happening in my life. Um, and so I'm trying to, I, I've been looking at a couple of options that essentially create, uh, email addresses that forward to your email address. Like burners kind of, like kind of, that you could just cut off at any moment. Right. Huh. So you get all the mail, but it, it's very similar to what Apple has done with their Apple ID sign in or create thing mm-hmm. that you don't have to share your email address with them. It creates a sort of a randomized email address that you can cut off at any time. And the the benefit of this particular thing for me is that one, anytime I sign up for any service, that email address doesn't get added oh, to man. whatever spam list they decide mm-hmm. to, to yeah. sell to. Yeah. But the other thing is too, is that I could just cut it off at any point and I don't have to worry about that. So that sounds really nice actually. 
It is, and there's a really, couple really of nice. options I've found, and the goal for me is to have something that's platform mm -hmm. independent. Because at the moment, I don't have any Apple devices. Otherwise, I probably yeah. would be using it. Mm -hmm. is but, that, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but is that yeah. is that what you like so much about Gmail? Is just that it's everywhere? Yes. Is it, is it more mm -hmm. of the functionality of the apps, or is it just that it's no matter what you're on, you can get to it? It's... It's honestly a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And I part of it has to do with my long-standing reliance on Chrome. Is that I would basically just sign into my Google account mm -hmm. and everything was connected. Um, yeah. Like yeah. YouTube, Gmail, mm -hmm. uh all of my notes, my Google Docs, my Google Drive. And any time you know, I've I've had Android for I think the longest amount of time out of anything I've used. Anytime I, I create a sign in, you know, on my phone, it just automatically creates it through Google. I don't need a password. I don't need any of that. But, but it's also like terrifying. Exactly. I because I, I have very little control over like how I manage that. If I lose access to my Google account, you know, I'm I'm basically screwed. You oh, know, wow. so yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of this this stuff that I'm trying to do with my email, like it, yeah, it definitely does tie into like every other aspect of just how convenient Google is. And I, I don't dislike Google. Like their services are incredible. Mm -hmm. Their products, like they may not always do things the best way, you know, like a million different chat apps over and over <laughs> again, just dying. But yeah, boy, do they create some really good things from time to time. And mm -hmm. I just... Well, if you throw I, enough at the wall, something will stick. All right, yeah. or All the right. wall will break. R.I.P. Google Wave. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, oh. <laughs> I loved Google Wave. I'm sorry, I really did. I did. Um, <laughs> Me too. Didn't they also have Feed Reader? Wasn't that a Google uh -huh. yes. product? It's Google. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was way back in the day. But you know, I mean, love them or hate them, it, whether you think Google mm -hmm. is is diabolical or mm -hmm. just genius. I mean, there's there's something to be said about having a strong ecosystem, and that's what mm -hmm. makes yep. it so difficult to pull away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and what's the email service that you're uh, that you're talking about? Yeah. So, at the moment, um, I'm I've been looking into something called Anon Addy, which was recommended to me by a uh, a person on Twitter, um, and it it seems pretty nice. It does. It's free like for a certain amount but then there's like uh there's premium versions of it because essentially it is a, a service that they offer right it's not something that you host locally they have to do the mail forwarding and all that um but i'm actually really really trying to hold out on fully implementing something like this um because i want to set it up with my proton mail account mm. because there's very little attached to that and so it kind of be like a fully clean slate for me the problem is I'm waiting because DuckDuckGo, which uh, has pretty decent privacy standards. I mean, they're not perfect. I don't really think any company can be perfectly private, but mm -hmm. um, they are actually working on an email service that does this, that basically just handles all of this. And I'm currently signed up for the, the beta for the wait list. And I'm really hoping I can get my grubby little hands <laughs> on it because this oh, would man. be perfect yeah. for me uh i didn't even know about that so thank yeah, you for mentioning I it i i haven't followed DuckDuckGo as closely as i probably should be mm -hmm. um but that's yet another thing you can come and talk <laughs> to us about so awesome before we go any further i want to take a moment to thank our friends at tuxedo computers for making linux for everyone content possible tuxedo specializes in sleek linux first laptops like the exceptional amd ryzen powered pulse 15 and the mighty stellaris 15 which features a vivid 1440p display your choice of eight core processors from intel or amd and up to an NVIDIA RTX 3080 for all the gorgeous gaming graphics you could possibly want. When Linux for Everyone was on the ropes, Tuxedo stepped in and helped out in a big way, and we are proud to call them a partner in this ongoing journey of ours. Go check them out at tuxedocomputers.com. And one of the segments that we're going to do in the new Linux for Everyone show is, uh, is something that you guys have all really enjoyed, and I've enjoyed finding them and talking about them and using them. The discovery of the week, but since this isn't a weekly show, uh, we're going to just call it Software Spotlight or App Spotlight or something. But um, every show, 
one of us is going to bring a new app to the table and talk about it because uh, th- there's never there's never a reason not to talk about cool new apps or old apps, the, mm-hmm. the best apps you've never heard of or something like that. <laughs> and uh, my, my eventual goal as, as I'm building the new website is to have kind of a database of every single app that we've ever mentioned uh, since the beginning of the Linux for Everyone podcast and the beginning of the Linux for Everyone YouTube channel. So uh, I might call on you guys for some help on that, but that's, that's, that's on the wish list. That's something that, that we're going to build. So here's the situation. You're like three hours into an insane, massive 4K Blender render. It's time sensitive, you gotta finish. But then friend of the channel and new Linux for Everyone show co-host Shickle calls you up and he's like, dude, we're doing the show in like 10 minutes, where are you? And then Jason, that's me, freaks out because he doesn't have time to start it over. He's gotta get it finished today. And in this scenario, Jason only has one big ass awesome production PC. So what is a Jason to do? There's not really a solution to that kind of dilemma where you're doing this uh, really, really resource intensive task on your PC and you want to take those resources and use something else, but you can't cancel this thing and start over because you're going to lose too much time. And that is where that is where consoles actually kind of save the day, <laughs> modern consoles, because you can suspend an app and just resume it later. Even even after you've put your console to sleep, you can just pick it up later. Well, now there is a solution, at least for uh, Linux and Windows users, mm-hmm. and it's called Nirna. It is spelled N-Y-R-N-A, Nirna. And it basically does that one thing. It suspends apps and games just like you would with a console, but not just one, right? You can You can suspend... I guess as many apps mm-hmm. or games as you have the memory, the the physical RAM to do. Um, so in a nutshell, you you basically install it, right? You you can do uh, I think it's a uh, uh, app image, mm-hmm. a portable package, and a dot deb on Linux, hmm. and then on Windows you can actually use WinGet uh, if you're if you're using the uh, command line. On Windows, you can win git install mm-hmm. Nira or typical exe installer. Um, so it's really cool that it works on on both Windows and Linux. No option for Mac OS, but um, yeah, it is. Maybe someday. I, well, I wouldn't be surprised. What? I wouldn't be surprised if Apple builds the, bakes this into their OS at some point because it's very much how you know using an iPad works. Right, like your apps yeah. are always just yeah. kind of suspended. Yeah, so um, but that's right. cool. I remember yeah, the first. The, yeah, the first time that I got an iPad, I was I was kind of in awe that I could just run like <laughs> I was just checking out games, right? Oh, I want to try this game, this yeah. game, this game, this game, and I was like, how is my how is my iPad not grinding to a halt with these seven games open? You know, I'm so used to doing stuff on a PC. <laughs> um, so it has limitations though, mm-hmm. because this um, it will free up all of your CPU and GPU resources. Mm-hmm. So you suspend the app and you get all those resources back. But you will not get your RAM, your physical uh, system memory, back. So then again, if you're if you're using <laughs> this app for what it's intended for, you know, um, you're probably someone who's like a creative professional or you're mm-hmm. a gamer, and you probably have a lot of RAM to work <laughs> with anyway. Uh, but I did I did run into some other limitations with it. It, it doesn't work on Caden Live at all <laughs> on Linux. Um, interestingly, it did not, it did not work on the battlefield 2042 beta Mm. on windows. It just said, can something, Mm -hmm. something like cannot talk to EA service or it just couldn't communicate with the, the uh, process Hmm. that was running. And, and, uh, on back on Linux, like if you launch a terminal and you run something like bash top or you run Mm -hmm. a Pharonix test suite and you've got those processes going. It it doesn't know how to stop those. It just it just can't do it. Huh. So it has some limitations, and I think I think the limitation is like if if something like Caden Live spawns another service like Melt mm-hmm. when you're actually vin- uh, <laughs> when you're actually rendering down your video, <laughs> uh, the way that Caden Live spawns that it's not like an easily mm-hmm. traceable child process or something. So Nirna doesn't know how to address it so it's you know it's very much a work in progress but it's a super useful idea and um it's kind of 
it's kind of an app that I didn't realize mm -hmm. I needed until now. Yeah, that's super but, cool. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. And ask, <laughs> some questions or, uh, ask me some questions. Or is it something that you guys would use that you would find useful? I think so. I think um, I, I'm curious about the RAM limitation. Why does it? So when you're when you're freezing the process, is it storing kind of the state in RAM? Is that why it doesn't free up RAM? Is that kind of how it works? I believe. Yeah, I believe that's yeah. what it's doing. So right. makes it makes a lot of sense. Could, I it could suspend mm -hmm. maybe suspend that kind of snapshot to disk as well. But RAM is probably faster. Right. Yeah. And it's probably easier to address. More compatible, in other words, right. saving it to RAM than than to disk. Yeah, and I would think that. I mean, I would think that the uh, ability to resume quickly is a is a um, like desired outcome. <laughs> you know, that's what. Yeah. That, that's like yeah, the yeah, new, yeah. with like new consoles. That's the whole. That's like that. I guess I don't. I don't have a PS5 or an, or one of the a new Xbox, but I from everything I've read, that like, that feature alone is like. Um, what a lot of people rave about is like that instant resume and it's because of that super fast memory. And so, um, yeah, that would make a ton of sense as to why it's, why it would do that and why it wouldn't free up your Ram. So that's really cool. I think that is something that, um, like you said, for, for purposes of, you know, if you're rendering video or whatever, and so you, you, you never know, like, it's kind of like that that puts a pause on all your resources. Like, well, I'm running this video now. I can't do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I had to, I had to step back and realize, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm spoiled because of the position <laughs> I'm in. I have a lot of computers. Sure. But most people, most people will only have mm -hmm. this main PC right here. Right. And in that case, it's a super valuable. Yeah. A uh, feature to have on your PC. And it, and, um, Speaking of, of speed, Jerry, it's mm -hmm. super, it's almost instantaneous. That's so just, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I tried it on Blender. I tried mm -hmm. it on some games. And it just, I mean, I was right in the middle of, um, I think it was Scarlet Nexus mm -hmm. in a fight. And I just, I just alt tabbed over to, uh, to Nirna and just hit that little button to pause it. And the like, screen instantly minimized. And all those resources came back. I was using, um, the a plasma's new system monitor to track the GPU hmm. usage of my Radeon, and like it just mm. instantly just saw all those levels, and you got it everything back. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, and resuming was also instantaneous. It just went right back into it. No stuttering. No uh, no nothing. So yeah, I'm all yeah, for it. It's almost like it's 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 kind of magical. So if you yeah. guys want to check it out, uh, we'll have links. You can see it in action on the YouTube channel. I'll have a link to the the dedicated video for that in the show notes for this episode and uh, also the link to the developer's website. Um, I bought him a coffee. If you guys are familiar <laughs> with the buy, uh, I forget the website's exact name, but it's buy me a coffee mm -hmm. basically. So if you find, you know, if you find it useful, go buy the developer a coffee. I'll have a link to that too. Okay. Shickle earlier in the show, you mentioned that you were moving to a service called N Anna and on Addy. A non -addy. Yes, mm -hmm. and, something like that. <laughs> and when we were talking about what do we want to discuss in this episode, um, you mentioned wanting to secure and privatize your online presence and communication. And before we really get into that, I want to ask you, what, what prompted you to want to do that? That's, that's a really good question, actually. And I've had a couple of other people ask me as well, because historically, I've been very friendly with Google and Microsoft and Apple because the conveniences they offer are really pretty great, you know? I mean, it's nice to literally just be able to talk to your computer and it just do what you want it to do. <laughs> like, it's handy. But um, a lot of stuff has been going on lately and I've been sort of reading up on how, just how important the, the data about you or the data about your data is. And it kind of just got me thinking more about it, right? Like, I've never been unconscious that a lot of personal data gets taken anytime you use Google services or, uh, or products, but it's not really bothered me. But I think seeing the people around me be completely unaware of just how much it, it, it impacts them without them realizing it 
sort of makes me want to try and find ways to reduce that. And through that process, find ways to help reduce it for the people around me. So part of it, part of it is for myself, because maybe, maybe I want to not be in that sort of filter bubble. But at the same time, I also want to make sure that my friends and my family can be safe and private as well. I think that they should at least be aware of options and have good options presented to them. So that that's the main goal for me, is really just finding those things that allow me to make a choice rather than just kind of assuming the most convenient option. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be nice, though, if those, if those alternatives were also <laughs> introducing some convenience mm-hmm. into yeah. life? They weren't so obscure to set up and difficult to use and, and, and things like that. You know what, what, so what's been prompting me, um, what's been scaring me is you hear about this a lot. You think that it's maybe paranoia or it's mm-hmm. a, it's a coincidence, but I have seen way too much evidence in the last few months to chalk it up as coincidence. Um, and I'm talking of course about ads mm-hmm. miraculously appearing on YouTube or um, you know the AdSense ads that follow you around the web or maybe on Facebook uh, about things that you're verbally talking about mm-hmm. with your phone nearby and you are confident that you've never, say, texted that to someone on WhatsApp or Messenger or a DM on Twitter. You're confident that that has never happened. And um, I started this thread on Twitter and people just came out of the woodwork mm-hmm. saying, yeah, that's absolutely happened to me. We, we tested it here. And then someone sent me an article at Vice mm-hmm. where they actually put that to the test with iPhones, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is before iOS 14.5 came out uh, that introduced kind of the what do you what, what, what is it, Jerry, they introduced uh for the ad so it's the it's the opt-in like um you can you can request uh that apps don't follow you around i think is that the, the feature you're talking okay. about yeah so yeah yeah just basically. some it's essentially like a security um i forget what they call it but yeah add its extra security features that um pretty much make apps and services um be explicit when they are tracking you or asking you for information <laughs> so and this is and and the reason you know that uh <clears throat> What they've implemented is somewhat working. Mm-hmm. Is that Facebook is really, really, it's, really pissed off? Yeah, they're mad about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you yeah. know it's working, right? Um, Serving the intended purpose. But but anyway, it's just it's it's not paranoia to me. Mm-mm. It's not coincidence. Like I know, I know that it's it's sometimes it feels like someone is just like sitting on my couch. Mm-hmm. A stranger is just sitting on my couch. And after I have, I'll have a conversation with my wife or something, they'll just kind of like pop up and go, hey, you know what you should buy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's, it's, and it's pretty it's, scary, I'm man. Shit. Well, I like the convenience factor. Mm-hmm. And I, for so long, I have, not, um, I have not been motivated because the convenience outweighed the intrusion of privacy, I guess, mm-hmm. if I want to be honest about it. But now I'm sitting here thinking about what? What does this data that's been collected about me look like in ten years? What does it look oh, like in mm-hmm. fifteen years? Like it's it everything. Just seems like the threat mm-hmm. and the privacy invasion is just going to get worse and worse and worse. So as even years go on. Even beyond the, the the fact that it feels like your microphones, like your services, are listening to you when you're talking, like that's really scary. I don't like. I read that Vice article. Um, super interesting. I don't know if you know like. I'm 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 on the fence on whether I think they actually are listening. I think there is there is definitely evidence to show that it is. Um, <laughs> Cuz I've had I mean I've had the exact same thing happen like you talk about something and it feels like the next day you're getting pinged with ads for it. Um but uh Reply All is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that podcast. They did an yeah. epi- they did an episode on this a while back and it was super interesting and even beyond the fact that maybe maybe these services are listening to us. 
Facebook, for example, what they actually are doing is almost scarier because they have this whole shadow footprint of like your persona online and who you're connected with. And they know so much about um, what you like, what your preferences are, you know, and then that extends out to your like immediate friends and family. They know all about what they like and where they go and where they travel. And so um, there's an example they use in the podcast of like um, somebody's mom was traveling to see them and Facebook knew that they was, that she was traveling to see them. And so, or knew that she was traveling to the city where these people lived and started showing the people that lived in that city that knew her ads for things that she likes. <laughs> like that's, that's Crazy. bonkers. That is bonkers. Like that it knows that much about you. And you're right. Like it's like, to me, that's worse than, Maybe not worse. It's almost as wor- bad as it listening to you, right? Because it has this yeah. whole, like, mountains and mountains of data built up um, about you and your friends and your likes and your family and all of this stuff. And it, the fact that it can piece all of that together and show you relevant ads is, A, yeah, convenient, but also incredibly scary. The, uh, the, the publisher of Reply All Gimlet Media, they actually <laughs> have a page that mm-hmm. I'm going to link in the show notes yep. it's a few years old i think but it's still completely valid mm-hmm. it's how to avoid being tracked by facebook right and yep. uh that is a a gold mine of information mm-hmm. there but yeah you're right i remember when this episode came out there was a website where um you could actually find out what facebook knows about you yep. and it's it's frighteningly <laughs> it detailed. like flat. oh for example i'm just i'm just gonna throw stuff out there like you're a you know, you're a previously divorced father of two who's lived in California and here and there, and you like rock music, and you have friends that are into this, and you frequently go to this place. It's just like, oh my god, that's yep. why like, that data gets into the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. No thanks. You don't even need a Facebook account for this profile to exist. Like that's what's insane mm-hmm. about it is that they build these profiles on everybody, whether they actually use Facebook or not which is ridiculous. But beyond that, um, just in the the past month, I've noticed really nice coincidences where um, the other day uh, I was going to meet my mom for lunch. And this was over text, but we were trying to figure out what we were going to get for lunch. We decided on Whataburger. And not more than five minutes later, I'm scrolling through Twitter and there's multiple ads for Whataburger, despite the fact that I almost never get ads for food, uh, especially yeah, like, food. yeah, no. Like so eToro and crypto stuff. Yeah. For me. That's all but I as get. soon as I did that, the very first ads I saw were for Whataburger, which I hadn't seen Whataburger ads in quite a while. Um, so I was like, okay, a little strange probably something i don't want to be dealing with you know it's cool but like i've already decided on whataburger so i don't need ads for it anyway but okay it knows even the fact that it you know i mean obviously location services is a thing like it knows where you are so it's going to give oh, you yeah. it's going to give you relevant things based, but still i mean where's the line there if you if you have the line pushed up a mm-hmm. millimeter at a time you, you don't, don't notice. really notice it happening. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm I'm creeped out about what does it look like mm-hmm. ten years from now. Right. Yep. Yep. It's like every every time we get a new convenience, that's like, oh, okay, like a new convenience at the, the sake of privacy, right? It's like, yeah. um, it's it's almost like uh, it's pushing that line maybe forward a few millimeters, and you don't really realize it because it's like, oh, this thing makes my life a lot easier. I've been super hesitant to put. Uh, voice assistants in my house because they are always listening, right? Like, yep. like home automation stuff. I mean, it's cool to be able to walk into a room and say, hey, computer, like, turn on my lights, right? But, like, I don't want things listening to me all the time. Not that I'm necessarily, you know, there's always that, that thing that's like, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, then why do you care? But it's like, I'm not doing anything wrong, but, like, it's that profile that it's building over time. What's that going to look like in 10 years? What am I giving up slowly? There's so many questions where it's like, I don't know if I'm eager to bow to my robot overlord so quickly. I, I think that even the most innocent conversations or, or search could be held against you in at some point in the future. Maybe it's a, 
maybe it's a misunderstanding, maybe it's a mistaken identity thing, but mm-hmm. you yeah. know, still, like there is always a risk of the most, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, just innocent, uh, inconsequential data about well, your life being used against you. So the other thing that I consider is how we consistently move towards more technologically intertwined uh, decision making. We use it to, you know, like companies create profiles on people and try and assess their fit based on certain criteria. There's programs being made to determine, you know, like what kind of person someone is, how they behave, how they Mm -hmm. act, how they're likely to respond in certain situations, what they're good at, what they're not good at. And as these become more and more of a default, and an asset relied on by both private companies and governments, you also run into the situation where all of this data that's built about you, if it's accessed in the in the future by a, a company or a government employing these technologies, even the smallest things that may not actually really be a knock on your character or a benefit of your character or whatever, could be used to sway the assessment of you. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, so we get to this point there, there's, I think there's a, I mean, you know, you guys know that I, I am, I try to be sort of an ambassador of positivity, Mm -hmm. right? But I'm also, I'm, I'm a pragmatist and I think it's, it's only fair to acknowledge that as a society we are going to have a very difficult time collectively quitting these things that give us so much convenience because Mm -hmm. the reason they are so polished or so elegant or so useful is because we're the product right and we're uh we're not paying for these things we are paying for them with our data and mm-hmm. our likes and our dislikes and our activity and our shopping habits and all of that. We're paying for it with with our online activity. Yep. And so mm-hmm. if you want to switch to all of these alternative services that are absolutely better for your privacy, the, the question is, are they going to be easier to use or as easy to use? Will people want to switch to them? Shickle, you were talking about, uh, on Twitter, you were talking about switching to Signal. Uh, right? Yeah. Or a uh, session, actually. Session, sorry. But Signal's uh, great. Um, so there, uh, a session is actually based on Signal. Um, but the question is, like, if I wanted to do that, could I bring all my friends and family over to that? Not no. really. There's no. no way. There's no way. That's never going to happen. Yep. Um, yep. That's the eternal so conundrum. Yep. Yeah. So in addition to to figuring out, okay, how do I do Google My Life? What are the alternatives to these products that are less privacy invasive or not privacy invasive at all um you know hopefully uh we also have to figure out that big conundrum it is <laughs> like i'm sorry gang but at some point we've got to fork over the money we've mm-hmm. got to be willing to pay for mm-hmm. these alternatives with our money so, so that they can be as convenient and useful as the things that we want to quit using <laughs> right Am yeah. I crazy? That's they, gonna no. have to happen. Not at all. It, it, there's always a cost associated with any kind of service or transaction, and that cost just varies based on whatever the business model of of the company providing it is. Um, if it, it's kind of difficult too, because I, I genuinely dislike the saying the if if it's free or, so, or what was it if it's free or the product or something like that. Because it, I, I don't think it's actually realistic. I think it's totally possible to have things that don't cost money that doesn't make you the product. But the reality of it is is that a lot of these companies have different priorities. And those priorities aren't in line with your privacy. They're in line with just providing the service and finding ways to make you stay on it. That's just how it works because that's, where they're, that's how they survive. Um. But one thing I've noticed, it's always been the hardest thing that I think pushes people away from seeking out private alternatives to communications or other services is actually the, the you know, well, my friends aren't using it. Mm-hmm. But 
the, the one thing that I've, I've sort of noticed is that if I try and treat something instead of it being a replacement for something else, if I treat it like something new, then the result is the same. If I join a new platform, mm -hmm. none of my friends are on it anyway. But over time, right. I build those connections, some mm -hmm. friends move on to those connections, and that becomes a platform ah. that's part of my so life. You, okay, so you are, you are playing a part in helping those people transition away from what exactly. they're using. Maybe it and, won't be a 100% success rate, but you're still making a, a, a difference there. Exactly. And, and, and the goal really is just to sort of to show that like if these alternatives can deliver experiences that are desirable while preventing it from being a, a massive data hole, <laughs> then you, you kind of you kind of win on both fronts. Right. Um, like I, I absolutely will not be able to get most of my friends to use signal or session. I, mm -hmm. It's just. But. I've also found that a surprising number of my contacts already have it. Uh, I, I've, I've joined Signal at one point, and I saw uh, a few of my coworkers were on there. I was like, oh, that's super interesting and um, pretty nice. But um, that also raises another concern, is that why does a private and secure application show me who else I know <laughs> is using that application? Doesn't that... Degrade. That's a really, really good observation. <laughs> yeah, doesn't wow. that sort of degrade isn't that sort their of an privacy? Of their privacy, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, I never, <laughs> never thought about it that way. I wonder yeah. if those are. I wonder if those. I wonder if those are like opt-in settings or something. And most oh, people it's just the don't. Default. It's the, just the default. Yeah. Yeah. They're opt-out settings. They're opt-out. Yeah, opt-out settings. That's what I meant. Uh, was yeah, opt-out. Yeah. yeah. But opt-out is opt-out is always the worst. It the is. The interesting yes. thing is too is that um, like with Signal, I think you can disable it, but. Apps like Telegram, which are very often regarded to as, you know, like private secure messengers and, and this and that. But like uh, Telegram doesn't let you opt out of it. Mm -hmm. And Telegram also um, doesn't even encrypt your messages by default. Like normal DMs are just normal DMs. There's mm -hmm. no encryption on them. So the fact that you'd have to manually create an encrypted chat... Uh, I, a lot of a lot of the people I've spoken to just assume it's the default. It is not. <laughs> it is not. It nope. should be, <laughs> but it is I've not. Years, years of <laughs> so many conversations on there too. I mean, nothing that I'm, you know, scared of or anything. But still, yeah, yeah. most of it's open entirely. So one of the so when I was having this conversation on Twitter about mm -hmm. about the phone freak out, you know, about me <laughs> swearing that my microphone was spying on me and all that. Um. A company stepped in smartly, I guess, as as some companies will do, and uh, and they said, "Hey, have you heard about us?" And so they're called NitroKey, and they specialize in basically securing your digital life. You know, they have uh, let's see, they have uh, the NitroKey, which is a you know USB key, NitroPad, NitroPC, the next box, NitroChat. Like they have an entire suite of hardware and software. <laughs> And so they suggested uh, this product of theirs called the Nitrophone. Uh, right now, it's the first generation Nitrophone. And they have, uh, this, is, this is really interesting. So there's a quote from Edward Snowden. Hmm. And he says, if I were configuring a smartphone today, I would use Graphene OS as the base operating system, which is basically like a super hardened version, super hardened and mm -hmm. super de-Googled version of Android. Um, and... He says, I would desolder the microphones. And so that is exactly what this company hmm. is doing. They are taking a Google Pixel 4a. So that's what, two generations old now? Yeah. Um, maybe they're due for an upgrade cycle. I'm not sure. But uh, what it is, is they take the Google Pixel 4a, they install Graphene OS on it, and they give you the option of literally uninstalling, physically removing the microphone and the all the accelerometer sensors so that like <laughs> there is no microphone on the device if you want to have any kind of audio communication you have to use a pair of headphones um and so you know they they have all these uh, obviously a lot of a lot of uh benefits to something like that um uh, where you know you get protection from spyware and zero day exploits and <laughs> physical tamper protection a great 
great type of device for someone who's maybe a journalist mm-hmm. um, and doesn't want to ever risk being spied on in any capacity or tracked or anything. Uh, so, you know, no tracking, no Google, um, all kinds of bullet points. You can, you can check it out at uh, nitrokey.com. But anyway, they're going to send me one. And um, I'm going to try to incorporate it into my daily life and see if I can actually maybe start the process <laughs> of Googling my life. So that's an interesting option. It's an expensive option because I think it starts at 650 euros. Wow. Yeah. Or how, whatever that is in US dollars. Um, it's pricey. And then yeah. it's like another, it's another. Uh, I think 200 euros for them to remove the sensors and the microphone before they wow. ship it out to you. So it's pricey, but if we've learned anything from purism, uh, <laughs> it's, that, it's that people are willing to pay for that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I will I will have it in the next, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and I'll let you guys know my that's uh, super experience cool. with it. Yeah. So that's one thing, but what else, what else do you guys think is out there that we could uh, incorporate into our lives? Uh, this is an area where I'm not, um, admittedly, not doing a whole lot. I mean, I use I have an iPhone, and um, you know, I'm I've been I've been an iPhone user since I think the iPhone 3G. Um, I've dabbled with with Android devices here and there, but always come back to the iPhone. To me, um, it serves my needs. I, I get a lot of crap about you know, Apple stuff, but it's like, I am in that ecosystem and it's great, right? Like yeah. even on the phone, like that's just, I, I've, I've purchased a lot of apps over the years and I'm, I'm happy to be in that ecosystem. And I do feel like Apple, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a customer to Apple. Like I'm locked into their ecosystem. I, I pay, I, you know, I, that, but I'm okay with that. And I do feel like they at least are maybe a bit more conscious about privacy and security than some other companies. At the end of the day, they're a business and they're trying, you know, they're making, they're making their money. They're going to, you know, yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. like, I'm not going to like, I'm not blinded to that fact, but I, I do feel, I do feel that at least, um, with some of these features that like we talked about earlier with, you know, um, forcing apps to kind of own up to how, and, uh, I think it's the, the, the privacy nutrition labels in the, in the apps, like to show what, uh, <laughs> nutrition. yeah, I think that's what they call them. Yeah. It's crazy, but oh, it's like, really called that? like, yeah. the, mm-hmm. like this, like the nutrition yeah. info on a cereal box. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. So yeah. like they're, you know, uh, apps are, apps are required to have those sorts where you could go in and see exactly what they're, what data they're taking from you and where it's going, yeah. those sorts yeah. of things. So like, I feel like, I feel good about that. Like to me, it's like that, it's that perfect compromise, not perfect. Nothing's perfect. It's all on fire <laughs> in my opinion, but it's like, to me, <laughs> To me, it's it, 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 it's a comfortable compromise of usability and ease of use, and um, but also like some data privacy. I feel like at least I'm somewhat in control of what's of what's going out there. To me, where where it gets crazy is is when is um, you know with your with on the web um, with things like Facebook trackers and cookies and so all that stuff. So I've 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 dove into a little bit of just like. Um, Things like PF Sense and um, Pi Hole um, devices that I put on my network to kind of limit um, those cookies and those trackers and things that are getting, um, you know, there's a whole conversation to be had about ad blocking. Jason, I know you have firsthand experience with, and you probably have thoughts and you have feelings, right? And so... Um, you know, to me, that's a balance there of like, I do, I do do some ad blocking, but it's like, I try to unblock ads on sites that I want to support. But for me more so, um, the reason I use devices like that are like these trackers and these cookies and, um, kind of taking control of that. And, um, there's a lot of great, you know, Firefox and Chrome extensions that you can use to kind of limit, you know, to limit that. Um, that's about as deep as I've, I've gotten. That's all going to be like, I think that's all going to be default pretty soon yeah i think so well and i love Um, it i know that on vivaldi like vivaldi Mm -hmm. it has a very uh a a very sane set of defaults Mm -hmm. when it comes to blocking trackers and ads Mm -hmm. um and that's not necessarily good for people publishing content on the (laughs) web but you know what if you're going to publish content on the web Mm -hmm. you have to you have a responsibility 
you do have a responsibility and you and don't throw everything in my face exactly like, yep don't be be tactful about mm-hmm. it and be smart yeah. about it respect don't your readers make me want to don't make me want to poke my eyes out when i visit your website <laughs> yeah. you know yep like, yeah. i love the way the guardian the guardian has this little blurb at the mm-hmm. end of every article hey we'd like to ask you a favor you know if you mm-hmm. can support us for like a yeah. dollar a month or something and then you go to somewhere like forbes mm-hmm and it's like auto playing video up here. Scroll down; the video follows you down here. Yeah. And you've got like the same ad three times on the sidebar, and then you've got multiple ads between paragraphs. And it's like I can't even tell what's not going to get me no. to pay you for. Mm. This is not going to make me pay a subscription no. to get away from this paywall. It's going to make me close the site and look at somewhere else. Go exactly. somewhere else. Yep. Anyway, tangent. <laughs> um, yeah, but things like that, and and to, to not to again not to. Uh, I mean, well, well, actually, yeah, I'm 100% going to show my Apple roots, but I think uh, with the new, like with Apple's new OS on like new uh, Monterey, the new uh, operating system, you know, they're building in some things into iCloud with um, uh, almost like a built-in VPN that routes your traffic to where it's, you know, untraceable. Um, it, that'll, huh. it, it's only for Safari, but so any, but any, on your phone or on your computer, if you have that, it's, it's like called private relay or something like that. I can't remember the exact name of the feature, but yeah, it'll 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 route your traffic through a couple different proxies to anonymize anonymize you. Hey, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, it's super. Uh, so you have to be. Um, it, it, it's part of your iCloud subscription. So if you oh, it, okay, it, okay, okay. So if you're an iCloud, and so if you're if you subscribe, it's like I pay ninety nine cents a month for like fifty gigs of storage just to offload yep. some some settings and stuff yeah. and so i have access to it and it works pretty well i mean i mean it messes with some geolocation stuff and again it's like there's some conveniences that it screws with but at the same time it's like that's a feature that they're building into their os that's pretty cool and i uh, shiko i think you had touched on it um if you use the um like login with apple feature it'll anonymize your email address i feel like apple has the user's best privacy interests at heart when compared to Android mm-hmm. and Windows. Yep. I yeah. feel like they do it better. I don't have a data set to prove that. Nope. Uh, but it's it's just my experience and and talking to other people. Um and so I feel like regardless of how you feel about the company, uh, mm-hmm. I think that they do a pretty decent job compared to the other huge operating systems on the market mm-hmm. at, at at you know I, keeping I, your interests uh mm-hmm. your yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. Um, yeah. Sorry, Shickle, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, I, I think on top of that, one of the biggest points in that favor is that by default, they're like this. Whereas mm-hmm. with Android, for example, I, I mean, I'm still not even done trying to <laughs> to get to the the same level that I have on iOS by default, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's just the amount of things that are enabled to just just grab any kind of data possible and send it off to whatever company is asking for it by default mm-hmm. without even checking is is kind of mind blowing. Whereas on iOS, like yeah, sometimes it's a little annoying to constantly like accept and allow things and mm-hmm. and read things, but like at least I'm making a more conscious de- decision about it. And it's not something that's just there all the time without even checking first. I just came across an article that says um, Google is tracking you on 86% of the top 50,000 <laughs> websites on the planet. Yep. Uh, Facebook is only tracking you, only tracking you on like 36 to 40% or something. Um, yeah. the, the place, I'm not going to say where I found this article, but the website where I found this article there were 25 trackers prevented from profiling. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. (laughs) And that's a small number. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes when I look at safaris uh, or Mm DuckDuckGo, you can, whoops, you can, you can track that with Mm DuckDuckGo as well. Yep. Uh, I've seen up to 76 trackers Mm -hmm. on one website. Just bananas. And that's probably just on like first load where everything draws in. It's not even considering what gets, constantly loaded in the background mm-hmm. every time you oh. scroll through a page and mm-hmm. oh yeah that's just like the initial hit um, yep. also i'd like to point out this this privacy reduction thing with cookies and trackers and all that like 
it's not even just about privacy. If you think about efficiency and you mm -hmm. think about the energy wasted on a global scale for all of these machines to process <laughs> and load and networks to send this data, sure, it's Damn. relatively minuscule on one mm -hmm. device, but with billions of devices worldwide, <laughs> how much energy do you think is being used just to, to personalize things for people? in the background mm -hmm. and, and serve and ads energy and bandwidth and, and, yep. and storage and yep. like, yeah, that's couple oh that God, I've never thought about that. Couple that with, uh, oh, yeah. with cryptocurrency. And it's like, that's why we're killing our planet. <laughs> Woo. This right. Is a super, super uplifting <laughs> episode of the mix for everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but, but this, this topic is so broad and, mm -hmm. and so important that, you know, we're never going to be able to tackle it in one episode or 10 or 20 or maybe an entire podcast series. Um, yeah, we're, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg here for sure. <laughs> yeah, very, definitely. Very the iceberg, you know, and, but I feel like we should have this conversation mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. We, we should um, we should motivate each other if we want to, you know, as 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 hosts of this show, mm -hmm. like we should motivate each mm -hmm. other to, um, to try new things, maybe talk about the pros and cons of them mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to encourage our audience to, uh, take small steps because and by I'm the way, taking, Jason, I'm, not, I, I'm taking baby, yeah. baby steps yeah. here. Tiny changes. You, sure. you brought up like showing the trackers, being able to see the trackers with things like Safari, but like, um, yeah, just to like highlight that, because I, I think that's somewhat relatively new in something mm -hmm. like Safari, but it's also not present in most browsers, mm -hmm. is actively showing you what's happening with your traffic. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, it's another yeah. point, I think, on Apple's, Apple's level, but I think that's a huge thing, mm -hmm. is that you don't even care if you have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. Huh. That's something that, that's something that Piehole shows you, doesn't it? Yep. Jerry? Yep. Yeah, you can get yeah, stats you know and what? see. To, yeah. You can get all kinds of detailed I need stats. To do that. Yeah, I it's need to do that. I might I might hit you up for some mm -hmm. advice on uh, getting that started because I've it's, got I've got a I think a Raspberry Pi three just sitting in my closet that I've never I've that's never what, used it. That's what I'm running mine on is, is a Raspberry Pi three and it's it couldn't be easier to get going and you'll Oh nice. Like um, does it does it does it uh, are there any cons? I mean, are there any <laughs> detrimental effects to your network traffic or the things you can access? So um, from a speed standpoint, no. Um, it, um, I, I have not noticed any detriment. I even tested it out just, you know, running some, nothing too scientific, but running some different speed tests. And from a speed mm -hmm. standpoint, um, and actually web pages and everything seem like they load, like my overall browsing experience is better. Now, they, you do run across, depending on how strict you set some of your settings, like um, clicking on um, clicking on when you do like a Google search, and sometimes like if you're searching for a product, and some of the first links will be like Amazon links or ads. Um, uh, those will get like, blocked. Those will get that, right? yeah. You, you may want that, want that. Um, yeah. but some sometimes those will get sometimes those will get blocked. Um, you know, there's um, I've had to go in at times uh, if trying to access maybe something uh, work related or. Um, Sometimes a URL URL will get hit. Um, I've had to go in and maybe whitelist some things um, if um, maybe images weren't showing properly. But that's so few and far between. Like um, it really is mostly plug and play, um, and you can go as deep with it as you want. Um, you know, you, if you're yeah, it's super 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 easy to configure and set up and get and get, cool. get going. So we can um, we can pop some links to um, in the show notes to um, just documentation okay. and a website for people that are interested in setting it up. But no, it's super, super, super handy to do. I think I've, I, I think I've got to do a video on that. It's, mm -hmm. it's yep. long overdue. I know yep. a lot of people know about it, but um, I would like to have that firsthand experience. Of yeah, it's great. And showing people how to do it. Yeah. I didn't have it when I got into my new place. I didn't have it for like the first two weeks and I'm like, could not get it set back up fast enough just because of like oh, the, really? the browsing experience is like just for those websites that are just like hound you with so many ads. Like <laughs> it's like, man, it's, I don't even see that stuff anymore. And it's like, there's some active participation on my behalf for like websites that I do want to support by seeing their ads. So I'll go in and whitelist those websites. Um, 
Ah, okay. You know, like I said, it's you know, that, that's I think that's a whole different topic of discussion about about ads and ad blocking and that sort of thing. But it, um, it is. We can, yeah. And we could probably tackle that sometime. But as I said, as like I try to be an active participant and like things that I know I want to support, you know, unblock those. But man, it's man, it it has made my home network experience so much better. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully by the time we are here again, all three of us, I can tell you guys about uh, my Nitro phone experience. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Are there any other uh, alternative softwares, hardwares uh, that you guys might be interested in trying or, or can suggest for people? And again, this is not, this is not nearly an exhaustive <laughs> list of things. It's just kind of a conversation yeah. about, about, you know, first, first steps, I guess. I, I'd say uh, two of the most important ones that I, I think I've done recently. Um, the first is uh, both a browser extension and a search engine. Mm -hmm. But um, DuckDuckGo, like, mm -hmm. it's not perfect. Nothing is. But honestly, the DuckDuckGo privacy essentials add-on is super duper handy. Um, uses DuckDuckGo as your search engine, but also shows you uh, what's being blocked on a web page and also lets you kind of sort of see how the web page is ranked in terms of uh, privacy, um, which is super, super cool. I highly recommend stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But also the other thing is uh, it's something that I use personally now. It's called Session. And it's a, it's a messaging app. And th the benefits of it are that by default, uh, and all the time, <laughs> it's it's end-to-end -end encrypted messaging. It is completely anonymous in regards to, it doesn't need a phone number for you to sign up, it doesn't need an email address, none of that. Um, very often, private messengers like, let's say, Signal, they require a phone number for you to sign up, which immediately de-anonymizes you <laughs> you know like your phone number is a very personal thing and mm -hmm. i right. don't even think... if it's not displaying that to others it still is yeah. displaying it to someone or something and so it's no longer anonymous yeah exactly it immediately ties anything you do there to you um so no phone number end-to-end -end encrypted but it's also uh onion routed uh it goes through multiple servers around the world yeah. and that allows it to anonymize the actual location of the traffic as well. So, what a perfect pretty, application. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you don't need, I mean, when you're doing something like that, it's going to affect, uh, it's going to increase latency and it's going to affect your speed. But with a messaging app, that's, it's yeah. really not something that you can detect. So, yeah. That's exactly. For, hmm. So, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's pretty easy in my opinion to get set up with i mean the only thing that's different from it from like a standard messenger is that you have like a recovery key to keep track of so oh, if you use like bitwarden or something that's a safe place mm -hmm. to store it because that's encrypted or um but, you know just support, something that uh, group chat can you have mm -hmm. group chats it does yeah. have group chat support okay. yep cool. and you can also have encrypted group chats um okay well that was a good that was a good talk Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> that's the first, that's the, no, it is like, that's mm -hmm. the first feeling that I have when I think about the steps that I, I should be taking to have a more private life online. It's, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. I'm scared both because it's daunting and because I have grown so used to the conveniences of certain things like Google Photos. I love yeah. Google Photos. Mm -hmm. I love just snapping a picture and having a backup of it. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that Google Photos knows like who my wife is and who my dog is and like where I've been and you know, all that stuff. And so it's um it's we we all have to get to a point where we have to we have to come to terms with what we're comfortable with and we have mm -hmm. to accept it if we are if we have to be honest with ourselves and say you know what i am willing to give up that convenience factor mm -hmm. to have a more private life online or just be honest with yourself and say you're not either mm -hmm. way more power to you but 
I'm not sure where I'm at yet. I think that there's, I think that there's certain things I want to do and certain things I want to keep. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if that's the proper way to really do it. You know? Yeah. I don't know if I'm still at risk of having all that data, um, collected and, you know, used against me for the next 10 or 15 years or I don't know, man. It's, um, <laughs> the one thing that I would, the one thing that I will say, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier is that I think, I think that we should at least explore mm-hmm. alternatives, um, alternative hardware and alternative software that isn't invading our, invading our privacy all the time. And we should be willing to pay for them. Yep. I think I, I think that goes hand. It's 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 okay to have a, a a bit of healthy skeptical fear of what's being yeah. uh, gathered on you. I mean, um, you don't live in you know obviously you don't want to live in kind of live in that fear paranoia state, but it's like yeah, it brings an awareness, right? Though, like it brings an awareness of like what's going on, and you can make tiny changes to your digital lifestyle that maybe um, slowly start to chip away at that and get you closer to that. Um, comfortable line to wear, you know, of uh, privacy. Comfortable line. That comfortable yeah. line. Comfortable of, line that we know isn't going to be pushed <laughs> up on that. Right. Exactly. Line. Of of, well, of well privacy said, and convenience. Well yes. Said. Cool. Uh, well, we also we also want to hear from you guys uh, from the community and from from people who are <laughs> in a position uh, to help with this privacy battle. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that we're going to do on a regular basis here is called Community Voice. I've done mm-hmm. that a few times on the old Linux for Everyone shows, but I uh, want to basically get your feedback on a certain topic, and then we'll play it back. Um, if it's a video, we'll play it. If it's an email, we'll read it, whatever. Um, but I want to hear from you guys, what do you think is the easiest step for people to take to start their journey of, of better online privacy? Not maybe the best, but the easiest first step for people to take. And if if you are working at a company mm-hmm. who uh, is making one of those products, uh, we want to hear from you too. And maybe we can get you on the show or maybe you can just send us an email uh, with some suggestions or whatever. So everyone in this in this battle, in this journey, want to hear from you guys. Um, Linux for everyone at pm.me is the email. That's uh, Linux for everyone at... Proton Mail. So Linux for everyone at pm.me. Mm-hmm. And Jerry can maybe flash that across the screen or something. Well, <laughs> uh, we'll have it in the show notes, of course, mm-hmm. with every episode, too. So get in touch with us. Let us know your mm-hmm. thoughts on this. Yep. And uh, I think, I think, I think just knocked out Linux for I everyone. I think therefore I so. am. I think, I think we've done it, that gentlemen. Was awesome. That was fun. We have done it. Uh, assuming <laughs> after this, this is funny. This is, this is kind of funny. Uh, maybe a little bit ironic. After spending an episode talking about online privacy, where can everyone find you guys online? <laughs> nowhere. Absolutely Jason, not. Absolutely nowhere. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I mean, for me, the uh, best place to find me is uh, twitter.com slash Jerry Morrison, just my name. So that's typically where I will interact the most. Uh, you could find me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash shickle. Um, but I'm also. I'm kind of everywhere. I write stuff on Medium, so if you want to find me on Medium, mm-hmm. I'm Shickle there. I, I've also got a, I'd say Mastodon, but I haven't logged in in a few <laughs> while, a while, yeah, a long time, very long. But um, if you want to see my pictures, I do like very amateur photography. I, uh, I'm on Pixelfed.social, mm-hmm. and I'm Shickle there as well. So Shickle is an institution. Find me. I'm you, I'm everywhere. You, you've been smart with your personal brand from mm-hmm. the beginning, I can tell. Because like, oh, yeah. if I just type shickle into something, I'm probably going to find you. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this in seventh grade. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> I'm totally inconsistent. Yeah. Like my personal Twitter username makes no sense because it was a a uh, a, a slogan from <laughs> the first podcast that I did back in 2004. Kill your FM. It was a music podcast. <laughs> uh, and then you know on Twitter. Linux for everyone is Linux, the number four, everyone, because spelled out was, was taken. And then I think it's different on Mastodon. <laughs> it's so it's, it's all over the place. But, um, if you want to find me, the best place to do that is either in our Discord or Telegram mm-hmm. communities, which are always really noisy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there's always some really interesting conversations happening there. So yeah, hit those up. Um, links are in the description mm-hmm. for this video and they're on the website and you'll find it. Yep. 
I'm Thanks there as well. Discord, Telegram, and Matrix, by the mm-hmm. way. Matrix. Has a Matrix as well. So all those links are there. Um, and I think that's it. You guys want to throw anything else out there before we say goodbye? No. No, it's been a pleasure. Cool. It has been a pleasure, man. <laughs> this has been great. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really happy to have you guys here. Yep. Um, happy okay. To be here. Well, on behalf of Jerry and Schickle, I have been your host, but not the host with the most, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> this is why I should just stick to what I always say. I'm going to stick to what I always say. Don't. Yep. Until we chat again, you guys take care and take care of each other. See ya. See ya. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh.